not saying that there's no value for department heads or employees. But the real value is for the part time people who don't and they have to work during the day. Right. So, because um, as I said to her, uh, if I made to it, say, Everybody wants to see what happens behind the scenes because they think it's all so exciting. <laughs> I'm intrigued. This is it. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> it's like a backstage pass. <laughs> yeah, well, you picked the wrong stage. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay, welcome to the January 23rd Board of Selectors meeting. If you would please stand and join me in the question of life. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, undivided, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. While we're standing, um, I'd like to take a moment. Last week, the town suffered a tragic loss um, with the passing of Maddie Dane. So, if we could just have a quick moment of silence for Maddie and her family. meeting is being audio and video recorded and will be shown on local access television. Um, Denise Reyes has joined us through Skype. Um, if anyone has trouble hearing her, just let me know and I can um, repeat back what she said. And also because she is uh, re participating remotely, we do have to take a roll call vote for each vote. Um, so um, first, um, we have a public hearing. Um, pursuant to Chapter 138 of Massachusetts General Laws, a public hearing will be held on Wednesday, January 23, 2019, at 7 p.m. in the Selectman's Meeting Room, Town Hall, 65 North Main Street, West Bridgewater, on the application for a beer and wine on-premise on liquor license for Meritira, incorporating doing business as Sodati, 320 West Center Street, West Bridgewater. Um, interested parties are invited to be present and to be heard. And this was published Thursday, January 3rd, 2019. So is there a motion to open? Motion to open the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. Um, those in favor? Raise. Aye. Murray, Murray yes. Can I hear yes? Okay. Um, David? Yep, so I spoke to legal counsel for the establishment earlier today, and the applicant would like to withdraw his, its, um, his application at this point. Okay, um, is there a motion to accept the withdrawal? No moved. Second. Uh, those in favor, raise. Yes. Murray? Murray, yes. Kinahan, yes. And is there a motion to close the public hearing? Any? Make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Uh, those in favor, raise. Yes. Murray? Murray, yes. Kinahan, yes. Okay, approved meeting minutes of December 19th, 2018. Moved. Second. Um, those in favor, raise. Raise, yes. Marrera. Marrera, yes. Can I hear yes? And accept for review the meeting minutes of December 27th. Big motion to accept, uh, to re accept for review the minutes of December 27th. Second. Uh, those in favor, raise. Yes. Marrera. Yes. Can I hear yes? And um, we need to formally notify the town clerk that... Um, the moderator position is vacant and to place it on the annual town ballot. So Moved. Is there Second. Okay, uh, those in favor, raise. Yes. Marrera? Marrera, oh, yes. Can I hand yes? Okay, um, proposed warehouse distribution facility, um, 725 Elm Street in Bridgewater. So this is in Bridgewater, um, not West Bridgewater, but it is in their industrial zone. Um, on Elm Street and very close to our residential zone. Um, so I believe David had a couple recommended um, 
recommendations to send over to the Bridgewater, is it the zoning board who's hearing it? Yeah, so it would be the zoning board of appeals. And so my only recommendation to the board is that is that we send a, a notice over that although they are in their industrial commercial zone, the concern obviously is, is that there will be more truck traffic in that area and that uh, please just be a good neighbor and do whatever you can through the ZBA process to permit it just – keeping in mind that we do have a residential uh, neighborhood right there and that whatever they can do to mitigate on our behalf and, and to keep West Bridgewater residents in mind. So that's really what I was just going to ask the board to be able to send over and, um, and we'll send it over to the board on your behalf. Thank you. Um, is there a motion to send that letter? So moved. Second. Uh, those in favor, raise. Yes. Marrero, yes. Kinahan, yes. Okay, um, and Streetlight, Route 28, Copeland Street. Um, Eldon brought this to our attention at the last meeting. Um, it's gone to the Street Lighting Committee, um, and they have sent back a recommendation. Um, so now we are just approving um, the Street Light. Well, I just think of beeping up a light there. The light is facing really the wrong way. I don't care if they move or they leave the light there, but I just would like to get more uh, more lighting. It's a very, very ha heavily traveled. Uh, uh, a lot of people go to Copeland Street, uh, come out of <coughs> come out of Copeland Street, and, and I think uh, uh, the I went by it tonight. There, it's very, very poorly lighted there, and I just like to see that uh, lighting uh, beefed up. I think uh, there's been a number of, of actions there. The, the Oak Colony Planning Council has also reviewed it. Uh, it's, it's, it's very, very heavily uh, traffic on that street. And um, I want to thank the Streetlight Committee for recommending it. Because I uh, asked that to go before, and, and I understand we uh, we got uh, notice back from them that they approved that uh, that change. So in other words, I don't really care how they do it as long as we get <coughs> more, more light right at the point of that uh, uh, where, you, where you go into Copeland Street and out of Copeland Street. Mm -hmm. okay, um, thank you, Alden. So is there a motion to approve the um, additional lighting at that intersection? I'll make that motion. Second. Uh, those in favor, raise. Yeah. Marrera? Marrera, yes. And Kenahan, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Alden. Um, Resignation of Joan McAndrew from the Council on Aging Board. Um, is there a motion to um, accept the resignation and send a letter of thanks to Joan? Yeah, I'll right. make, make a motion. Go ahead, go ahead, uh, Denise. I will make a motion to accept the resignation of Joan McAndrew. Is there a second? I'll second it. Uh, those in favor, raise. Yes. Herrera? Yes. Can I hand yes? Um, we have the also the resignation of uh, Denise Lewis from the ADA committee. Make a motion to accept the resignation of Denise Lewis. I'll second it. Um, those in favor? Raise. Raise, yes. Maria? Maria, yes. Can I hand yes? Um, and we also have um, an application um, for appointment to the ADA committee um, from Patricia Spray. I'll make a okay. motion. Go ahead. I'll, I'll make a motion then to uh, appoint her to the ADA committee. Second. Okay. Uh, those in favor, raise. Yes. Murrah? Yes. And Kenny Hinn, yes. Okay. Um, ADA um, training session. Um, Joan, did you want to speak to this? Sure. Um, good evening, and, and thank you for the opportunity uh, tonight to, to just kind of request some training. Uh, in light of some of the ADA concerns brought up during 2018, I've reached out to the Massachusetts Office of Disability uh, to provide an opportunity to educate board and committee members, as well as interested employees in the town of West Bridgewater, regarding ADA law and our responsibility to the West Bridgewater community. This would be a voluntary training covering uh, the following areas. It would be uh, a broad overall view of ADA and compliance of what we're obligated to do as uh, members of the community and, and those people in the community that we represent. 
The training would consist of a brief definition and overview of ADA law, Title II state and local government obligations under ADA, reasonable accommodations, and auxiliary aids for meetings, web accessibility and accessible documents for emailings about meetings, service animals under Title II, what the roles and responsibilities are, their rights and obligations, and service animals as accommodations under the ADA. The presentation would be about an hour, uh, leaving 30 minutes for a question and answer period. Uh, training, would, we'd look to schedule the training in March uh, through April at some point, utilizing either the high school or St. Anne's Parish Center for the training. Uh, at this time, the Massachusetts Office of Disability is requesting that the training be done between the hours of 9 and 5. Uh, during the day. I understand that most of our boards are voluntary and, and people do have uh, work during the day. So trying to work out, work that out uh, to see if we can provide some off-site training uh, in the evening hours. Uh, so I'll continue to, to kind of work through that. But more, I was just looking for the opportunity to, to provide the training to uh, the members of boards and elected committees in most of the Okay, um, thank you. That would be great. Um, we appreciate your effort in that. And um, it definitely would be great to have one in the evening, if possible. Um, Eldon, did you have any? Yeah, I think it's, it's great to do it. I mean, it's, there's an awful a lot that, uh, you know, that the committee has to uh, know, uh, you know, to uh, do that. Uh, and the more education you get, the better. You can, uh, uh, you know, um, address the problems that are out there because they certainly, uh, uh, and uh, everywhere you go, there's, you know, access. And uh, like I said, I've been on that committee and uh, I, I, you know, a little bit more education is, is great. I'm great. Thank you for uh, tackling that. opportunity for for the board members and department heads to learn a little bit more about what we're responsible for as well when we are dealing with the public and potentially someone might have um, a disability that we need to recognize and be sensitive to and make sure we can accommodate we do accommodate the only thing I mentioned to Joan is the, the hours for the course, it may be difficult for some of us that are, are working full time. So, if we could do an evening class, that would be great, or um, maybe an early morning um, or four o'clock time slot would be better for us. I can certainly talk to the, the MOD about that. Good. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you, and thank we'll you wait for uh, from coming you. in and explaining that to us. Um, David, this doesn't require any vote. It really doesn't need a vote at all. You're, you're, more, you're free to, to seek our assistance if you need some. Okay. Um, you know, we can certainly try to communicate to whoever you would like us to communicate to. Um, but I think at this point is to work with the school or St. Saint, Saint, um, Saint Anne's Parish, whichever you prefer, okay. and then select a date and time and then communicate it to our office as well, and we'll get the okay. information out there. But you're, you're certainly within your role and jurisdiction to offer a training class. Thank you. Um, okay, um, to 255 Walnut Street, a uh, lot two that was um, put out to bid. I believe the bid came in about thirty thousand dollars more than the um, taxes that were owed. Is that right? Did. Um, so we are just voting to award that to Outfront Media. Oh. Is there a second? Yes. Um, those in favor, raise. Yes. Murray, yes. Kinahan, yes. Okay. Um, approved grant agreement for Old Bridgewater Historical Society um, architectural conditions assessment. Um, David, do you mind just quickly explaining that? Sure. Um, at this past year's annual town meeting on June 4th, um, CPC funds were sought from Old Bridgewater Historical Society for $20,000 to do some renovating and to uh, make the appropriate changes to keep the building viable. It was approved, 
And so we have been negotiating with Old Bridgewater as to what they could spend the money on and what they can't, because obviously it has to comply with state law. Uh, we have ent we have a grant agreement before the board. It has been reviewed by town council, who has signed off on it, along with the CPC uh, coordinator Jen Goldson as well. So at this point, I'm just seeking an approval from the board. Okay. Um, is there a motion for approval? I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. <laughs> okay. Hi. Agreement, which one All right. I'll second it. Okay. Those in favor, raise. Yes. Marrera? Yes. Kinahan, yes. Okay. Um, public comment period? Yeah. Oh, um, Ann Town Administrator's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before we do that, uh, I would just like to say, you know, it, it seems to be that it, it was even on, <clears throat> when we were talking about Copeland Street, and that uh, Matthew Street is coming up again. Uh, and, you know, it's been long, six years, and we, we've got to push that thing along. You know, I talked to Chris. Chris is talking to the old planning, uh, planning council. And I don't really know, if, if, you know, with the next town meeting that I know we appropriated the engineering for East Street, but i like to give that a priority, a, a push, because that's long overdue. And, of course, as you know, the longer we wait, the more it costs for those lights. But I, I, I would like to get <clears throat> something started there. Uh, so uh, at least somewhere down the road that we can have the light at that intersection. I'm so bothered by those cars that that pop through that uh, stop sign and try to get out in the middle of the road there. I don't know if, if, if a temporary stop sign that lights up will keep them behind that line. But I wish the police would... <coughs> and force them to stop and, and not go out into the road, which is almost impossible if you're coming out of Matfield and going right to sea. Even if even if you got a clear shot, you can't get out, you know? Mm -hmm. Have we ever had a cost estimate on that? <coughs> yeah. We're probably looking at a half million or so based on that East Street one. Um, probably, yes. All right, I just think that I'd like to make it as... As a priority, to uh, uh, keep moving on it, and uh, and definitely get it on that tipler, so uh, uh, you know, at least we'll get it moving. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Mr. Chairman, just to answer your question, uh, Selectman Marrero and I have discussed this at length, and and we are almost done the East Street project. Um, I'm going to have it on the next agenda because hopefully I'm going to have real information for you, but hopefully that'll be done, and then the next project that I think we need to fund or looking at funding is that one. So we have to do the engineering. The only thing that this one's going to be a little bit tricky is because Route 28 is a state road. And so the state, whenever they do a state road, they require sidewalks on both sides. You would have to ask for a waiver and go through a pretty extensive waiver process. Now there is a sidewalk currently on the cemetery side, so that's positive. But if they're going to require sidewalks on both sides, which is what they normally do, that means you could have a sidewalk where Nico's is and Grand Slam is, and they are already are pretty limited for parking. So we would have to probably seek a waiver um, in order to do it and probably have to fund it ourselves in order to get that waiver. We, we'd have to go through that process and find out. But uh, my guess is is that it's going to be difficult to add sidewalks on, on both sides there. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can just ask for a, uh, a meeting or somebody come before us from Mass Highway. To give us some direction. I mean, uh, there, like you say, it's a state highway. We'd like to move the project, and we certainly want their help to move this thing along. I agree with Alvin. If we could at least start scoping it out and find out if we will definitely need a waiver or not. Yeah, so, like I said, I think Dave is right. As long as we we get the thing moving, and uh, and then we can decide what, what we want to do. If we want to take the same, we did like on e East Street, and come up with some of the the money for the engineering, and uh, and move the thing along. Uh, but uh, as long as we let it stay there, it, it's going to get no moving unless we push it, and we're going to have to push that to, to get that light there. And it certainly. 
needed and uh, and wanted. And that's one of the conversations I have. When you guys are going to get the light there? You know, just when you guys are going to get the light. I mean, people don't realize it takes so dang much to get all these people together. And, and now, of course, David brought up a point there. It's right on 28, and that's the Mass Highway. And uh, maybe we should just bring them in and have them uh, 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 give us some direction what to do to move the thing along. Thank you. Um, so, um, under my report, just basically a couple of FYIs and then a discussion at the end. Uh, first is is that we have two ex-police cruisers, a 2009 Crown Victoria and a 2013 Ford Taurus. Um, and what we did was we took these out some years ago. They both have high miles on them. We've basically been using the vehicles as parts. Neither one of the vehicles are really roadworthy at this point, according to our town mechanic at this point he's recommending that because we're, we're transitioning from these vehicles out of our fleet the parts are no longer going to be necessary and what is left is just not not usable so under your uh, disposal policy as chief procurement officer I can sell off the property but only after the board takes a vote to dis <coughs> declare it as surplus vehicles and so I'm asking the board to take that vote okay is there a motion motion to, to do that Second. Those in favor, raise. Yeah. Raise. Yes. Can you hear yes? Thank you. Uh, next one is is just again just an FYI. Uh, we did aggre municipal aggregation for electricity a couple of years ago. You could see above that for the people that did take advantage of it that in an aggregate is it per quarter residents and businesses are saving about one hundred and fifty seven thousand dollars per year. Residents per quarter. In the aggregate, are saving about $114,000 per quarter. So, again, it's some savings. We always knew that per meter it was only going to be $10 to $12, $15 a month. But, again, most people would agree it's probably better in their pocket than National Grid. So, so with that, this was just an FYI to let everybody know that with the intent of the program, which was to realize savings, the, um, the data proves that there has been savings in town. Uh, the next one on the agenda is in reference to scholarship fundraising. Again, per policy I signed off on, it's not till May 4th, but the uh, annual scholarship fundraising held by the middle school, senior high school over at the Howard Street and Spring Street intersections uh, and at the transfer station on May 4th. And the last one is more of a discussion and some direction that I'm looking for from the board. I have provided to you a letter. I've been talking to the sealer and weights, Dave and Moore, and for those of people who do not know what our sealer and weights person does, is that he goes out, for example, and inspects the gas stations. He's required by, by law to do it every 24 months. And he goes out and he makes sure that when you pump 10 gallons, you're really getting 10 gallons, in that the corresponding price is consistent with what the price should be. He then has to go to all of the other markets in town, say, for example, True Keys and Market Basket, and make sure that when you put four pounds of potatoes on the scale, you're really getting four pounds. And so he does that throughout the entire town. Uh, and our current budget is just around $6,000 or so. And so a few years ago, I recognized that we are not bringing in enough revenue to cover the fees and so uh, to cover the costs. So we lowered it a little bit. But he's done some research for me. And he's provided the fact that we are under market as to what, uh, what we should be charging for our fee schedule. So we could just go forward a little bit, Lana, please. This, unfortunately, is a little bit small, but I want to go to the last page uh, because what we did was is that we're providing on the last page what the averages throughout what we surveyed in the state. Um, it was 139 cities and towns that responded. So that is almost half of the, um, town, uh, half of the entire state. And you'll see what the averages are for each category and where West Bridgewater stands and what the proposal is from him, from Mr. Moore. In just about, in just every category, we are well below the market rate by, you know, 10, 20, 30 percent, which quite frankly is not a lot of value money-wise because these are small fees. $25 to $30 is only $5, but that does represent a 25 percent difference. So in any event... Um, he's looking to increase these fees, and after doing the analysis, I think he's accurate that we should be doing it because we have to cover the cost of the service. 
So normally the Board of Selectmen would just take a vote because you have jurisdiction over all the local fees, except for whatever silly reason. In this particular case, it looks like a bylaw was passed somewhere around 17, 18 years ago, and it set the fees for sealer and weights, and it does not provide any guidance as to how you change the fees. So every single time that we want to change the fees, you would have to go to town meeting. And not only do I think that that's pretty inefficient, I don't think it makes sense that we would go to town meeting and we would ask people in the, in the town to vote on what the price should be for a 10-pound to 100-pound scale. I mean, that's what we do every day is to do this research, and it would be unfair to them to have to weigh in on it. So with that said, um, since you can't change the fees unilaterally, the only thing we can do is we have to make a modification to the bylaw. So my recommendation is, uh, and we've, we've placed the bylaw in front of you, is that my recommendation is, excuse me, I'm just going to go forward, is that we add Section 2, and it will say here at the end of the bylaw, the Board of Selectmen shall have the authority to amend such fees from time to time as they deem necessary at a duly posted meeting. <laughs> so by receiving the authorization to do that, then you could just make the changes. <coughs> just to let you know, that would be consistent with your other bylaws. So, for example, your wetland protection fund. It doesn't stipulate what the fees are. It just says that the Conservation Commission is empowered to set fees and make changes as they see fit. This is what the anomaly is, is this bylaw. So we have one of two options. We can either add this section and state what it is so that way everybody knows, or you can move to delete the entire bylaw which in essence then puts all the jurisdiction back into the Board of Selectmen. In the end, you get to the same place. It's a matter of what you would prefer if you even prefer to move in this direction. Okay. Um, what would your recommendation be? You know, delete the whole bylaw? Or? Well, certainly deleting the bylaw, I think, makes a lot of sense. That way there's okay. clarity because somebody may read the bylaw really quick and miss Section 2. <laughs> Um, so if we don't have it, I think that that probably does make the most of, amount of sense. And the reason I've placed it on the agenda now as opposed to waiting is that under our new process is that if, your board, if the board is in favor of doing this, I would then send this off to the bylaw study committee. The bylaw study committee would then send back their recommendation, and then you would make a decision whether you post it on the warrant or not for June's annual town meeting. Okay. Okay. Yep. My, my, I would be in favor of deleting the bylaw as well. Okay. Sounds like that's what we'll do. All right. yeah. So if that's the case, and I would just ask you to take a motion that you would pre you would like to see the deletion of this bylaw, and then I will send that information over to the bylaw study committee for their review. Is there a motion? Denise? I'll make a motion to delete that section, to delete that bylaw. I'll, I'll second that motion. Are those in favor? Reyes? Yes. Mara? Yes. Can I hand yes? Okay, um, with nothing else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Okay, um, those in favor, raise. Yes. Yeah. Marrera? Yes. Canahan, yes. We're adjourned.